Now, Professor Chilidzi Marala is counting down the months before he takes charge of the United Nations University in Tokyo, Japan. The institution is a multinational university that acts as a bridge between the international academic community and the United Nations system. Described by his peers as a modern academic, surely they're saying that uneasy lies the head, that wears a crown, doesn't apply to him. Or does it? Well, Prof is joining us now here to talk more on his appointment. Congratulations. Congratulations, I guess, are in order because we as South Africans have to be proud of such, uh, of such roles at the international level. Are you excited, Prof? I'm absolutely excited to be the second, the under secretary general of the United Nations. Of course, we know uh, our incoming chancellor of the University of Johannesburg, uh, Dr. Pumzle Mlambumuka, was also an under secretary general of the United Nations uh, uh, for the past uh, eight years. So I am really excited. But what is more important is the work that needs to be done. It's too important the work for anybody to sleep on the job. Okay, before we talk about the work that needs to be done, I understand that this university has evolved into the United Nations policy focus think tank. What kind of experiences are you taking there with you? Besides, I know you've written more than a dozen books, if not more than 20 books already. Well, I think I am a, a, an excellent uh, vice chancellor and leader. Uh, secondly, I think I understand uh, the global challenges, uh, for example, the Sustainable Development Goals, which is uh, the goals that have been prescribed by the, by the uh, um, United Nations. Uh, uh, if you would uh, recall, according to the Times Higher Education, the University of Johannesburg is actually ranked first in South Africa and second in Africa on the impact of its work on the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So these are some of the experiences that I am I'm taking to the United Nations University, the interconnectivity uh, with, uh, with the global academy, uh, because I firmly believe that uh, the United Nations University can act as a bridge between the universities in the global north uh, with the universities in the global south uh, global South are obviously developing countries, and Global North are developed countries. And I also think that uh, uh, you know the focus on on digitization, uh, uh, digital literacy is becoming a human rights. And I think uh, the United Nations University will have to play uh, a driving role in that uh, quality education. We need to ensure that uh, uh, excellent uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and available um, uh, quality education uh, happens whether you are in the global south or global north and the United Nations University can yeah. facilitate that. The University of Johannesburg is losing, is losing big time. Was it an easy decision for you to make? Did you have to ponder quite a bit before you went to them and say, guys, I've got this opportunity in Japan? Well, I think um, I think the University of Johannesburg is at a level where uh, excellence cannot be reversed. Uh, we are now ranked second in in, in South Af in, in Africa uh, uh, by by the authoritative uh, QS rankings. Uh, we have fantastic staff members who are working in our communities, uh, driving research agenda. And by the time I leave the University of Johannesburg, it will be the biggest producer of research uh, in South Africa and arguably in the African continent. So I live with, uh, with great pride that the difficult work has already been done and whoever is going to come will have to consolidate and deepen that excellence that is embedded in all aspects of the University of Johannesburg. I understand that currently the, university, the United Nations University has institutes in about 12 countries worldwide. Would you seek to expand its footprint? Would you make the expansion of its footprint globally as one of your, of your legacies, let's say, by the time you leave that post in the in future? Uh, absolutely. No, look, I'm going to go and look at what is... Uh, 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 what is available. One thing that is, uh, that is for sure is that it does not have a single institute south of the equator. And I think uh, in the interest 
of, uh, of of inclusivity. Uh, we ought to have something in the in the in the in the southern hemisphere, and uh, and most importantly uh, uh, is the work that needs to be done. Uh, is the problems that are in the global south. How do we infuse them into the work of the United Nations University, and how do we come closer uh, to those geographic areas? Because it is always good uh, to be operating from a distance. It is even more, uh, more, more effective when you are operating closer uh, to the sources of the issues that you're dealing with. Yeah, I was going to use the term Global South, but you beat me to it because I was thinking I've seen some reaction coming out of uh, the United Nations after your appointment was announced that uh, they welcome uh, this uh, distinguished uh, academic leader from the Global South. Now, part of that, if there's nothing south of the equator, in your views as you begin to think about the way forward? I mean, you still got about, about eight months or so. You're starting in March next year, I yeah. understand. Yeah. yeah. As you're beginning to grapple yeah. and think about what else could you be doing, I, I, I must confess, I don't know much more about the United Nations University than what I saw in the press release that was an announcing your, your appointment. The awareness part of it for and the young people. And that situation is going to change. That's what I was going to ask you. How are you going to change that? <laughs> no, I, no, I think I, I think I think we change uh, that by solving uh, the global challenges that confront all of us uh, by ensuring that our staff is as representative uh, as possible, uh, by ensuring that we work very closely with member states, all of them, you know, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we, we we bring them along. Uh, by w collaborating with universities across all member states. One of the advantages of the United Nations University is that it cannot be accused of working in the interest of a member state. It is working in the interest of all member states. And I think that is very, very important. And that is an advantage that one can be able to use in order to expand uh, its footprint to be able to do much more. Uh, to solve the global challenges. Okay, now it's eight months to go. The transition here at the University of Johannesburg is as equally important as the one that you're going to be part of as you take over there from the current, uh, current uh, rector of the Un United Nations University. What are your plans uh, as you exit the University of Johannesburg? Well, I mean, just to put things uh, uh, on record, uh, 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 my announcement was only made on Monday, uh, just to show you how reactive and how dynamic the University of Johannesburg is. By Friday, the advert for my ad, uh, my uh, uh, replacement was already out on Mail and Guardian and other uh, uh, mediums. You know, um, the plan is that uh, by the end of September we should have a new vice chancellor that is going to work with me for six months is to uh, to hand over what needs to be done so that uh, when uh, that uh, identified individual takes uh, over on the 1st of March, uh, then that person will hit the ground running. So between September and that period, you guys going to be you're going to be doing the transition handing over. When are you uh, therefore planning uh, to 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 land in uh, Tokyo? Well, uh, since I start on the 1st of, uh, of, of March, uh, obviously I will need a few weeks uh, there just to acclimatize myself with the environment. One of the things that I'm looking forward to and I'm going to do when I arrive there is to get a tutor who is going to teach me Japanese. Because I think it is very, very important that uh, as a leader of the United Nations University that is based in Japan, uh, that I at least... Um, uh, 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 get um, uh, uh, imbued in the culture and the language of Japan. Yeah, maybe we must start practicing eating sushi right now. That's one of the cultures, the in terms of the of the food. Prof, Prof. Now, very seriously, you've mentioned innovation. You've mentioned we're in the digital age and stuff like that. You are among a number of highly respected academics in this country and scientists who are really flying the flag high. We saw now during the coronavirus pandemic how well respected South African scientists are and how far advanced uh, advanced we are. You are now going to be 
contributing at a, at, at a global level. There is something significant to be said about that, that national pride going global. Am I correct? No, no, absolutely. I think uh, uh, part of the reason why you should have the representation from all member states is because they bring with them part of them that is valuable to the world. Uh, I am. I come from South Africa, and South Africa has had um, uh, quite successful transition uh, from apartheid to democratic country. We have not had any coups ever since uh, uh, our transition. Uh, we have created a society with all its challenges, okay. with all its challenges that we can actually be proud of. Uh, our constitution. Uh, the principles of, uh, of, of, of of human rights embedded in our constitution. Yes, yes. Um, none of us, uh, none of us have to worry that uh, we are going to be arrested for what we have said. And so I will take uh, uh, Ubuntu, uh, the the concept of Ubuntu. Uh, uh, you know, you are, uh, I am, therefore you are. Uh, and vice versa. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take that to the rest of the world. Thank you very much, Professor Chiliz Marala. We wish you well. Congratulations. We will touch base with you, of course. Don't forget us when you are at the United Nations University to talk to us here at ENCA.